about radio. Hi guys, uh, this is the drill body that I'm uh, going to be using on the rotator, at least that's uh, what I'm planning. Um, i say the battery's packed off on uh, this um, probably a year or two ago, and um, uh, yeah, 2008 I bought this drill. Um, uh, but it, it, it packed up some time ago. But what I did do before it uh, died completely, um, I always marked the batteries uh, positive and negative because uh, there's no indicators on the battery itself other than opening it up and if you um, uh, can't see down there if you um, uh, look down there there's uh, those are the terminals that the battery connects to and um, there's no indicator and if you get it mixed up it's not just a case of reversing the motor there's a little inverter in here and I'll show you <clears throat> there's a lot more technology packed into these things than you you may actually appreciate because you could be forgiven uh, for thinking that's just uh, you know some sort of rear stat some sort of variable resistor um, there but um, what's going on there yeah. um, you you could be forgiven for thinking that this is just some sort of variable resistor um, but it's it's not it's a, it's a little inverter package so although you're putting uh, DC in here you actually get uh, a mixture of AC and DC on the motor so I guess you call it chop DC um, but uh, it's this little inverter that uh, let's slide that out that um, gives the uh, the characteristic uh, uh, torque that you get from these drills. Um, so you know you, you may have uh, wondered, you know, wh why are they so powerful at low speed? And it's uh, it's not just the fact um, that it's uh, you know the gearing. Uh, I think what this will be doing is it'll be giving it high voltage pulses. Uh, but intermittently and um, I'd say there's an awful lot of work um, goes into the development of that so what I'm going to do is uh, the the little switch on here uh, that's the uh, the reversing and locking switch there um, uh, it's actually built into the inverter I was hoping it was going to be different uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to extend these leads for the motor and I'm going to have this mechanism in the shack I'll tidy it up so that it's um, uh, in some sort of presentable form and then the forward and reverse will be here and I'll put a DC supply into there um, but uh, I'll just show you that um, uh, what that signal is that's 19.5 uh, volts DC and if we go across the motor there. But if we look at it on the AC range, And it's that uh, AC content and the, the, the switching characteristics of uh, this, uh, th this little um, inverter that uh, give these, um, these drills the torque characteristics that they have. Yes, I've got some lovely gears uh, 
in them, some very clever uh, little gearboxes. Um, but uh, this little package is responsible for the, the torque characteristics. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, rather than try and replicate this, I'm simply going to extend these two wires and um, uh, arrange to have this mechanism, the inverter and its uh, reversing switch, all built into this neat little package, um, and have that in the shack and simply extend these two wires. Now I've got some five core cable. Um, it's uh, much thicker than this. Uh, it's probably um, two or three times thicker or cross-sectional area than that, than that bit of wire. So uh, I don't think I'm going to be in a problem with volts drop at all. I want to get some idea what the uh, current is like. Um, so I'm on the 10 amp range on the meter DC and I'm measuring the current from the battery and um, rather than in between the inverter and the motor. So I'm going to try and hold the chuck. That's the uh, torque limiter coming in. It's um, I got it set fairly high. See the torque. There, let's uh, turn it up a bit. Get the meter in shot. So, I, I don't think there's any excess current there that's going to give me a problem. So that's the uh, inverter or controller out of the drill and that's uh, quite a chunky lump of copper for the heat sink there and um, it's, uh, it says here uh, it says there um, 20 amps 18 volts DC um, so as a maximum rating and then let's say the uh, the reversing switch which is operated by that little bit of yellow plastic um, that switches left and right uh, is there. Um, so uh, not so many years back <laughs> a 20 amp switch uh, um, would have been uh, that big for a, a drill but now it's got the switch the reversing switch and um, uh, a very uh, uh, technical um, motor controller built into that tiny little package and uh, I bet a lot of these get thrown away so I'm sure you can pick one of these drills up at a car boot sale because once the battery is shot the, the failure mode of these things is always the batteries isn't it the, the drill's still good it may be bearings may be a bit ropey but uh, for a hammer drill it's done a lot of work so uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure you pick these up very cheaply. I would love to open this off and have a look look at it. There's these little ears, uh, top and bottom, and around it. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I've seen stuff like this put together, and when it's assembled, there's all sorts of little jigs and fixtures, and uh, uh, it's the sort of thing that. Um, uh, I think you might just take that apart and wish you hadn't but uh, if I've got another one one day I, I might pick one up at a car boot sale just to uh, just to wreck it and have a look because I think that's a bit of fun I love to see how things work I love to get inside uh, machines and uh, devices um, but there you go this is the cable uh, that I've bought it's a five core cable uh, this extra white bit that's just a former that uh, allows the cables to be formed nicely into a, a circle uh, so take that out of the way um, and it's it's fairly thick but um, I could have bought uh, a, a thinner one and uh, those are the two samples so I would have liked to have been using a cable uh, uh, like this a little skinny one but I thought uh, at least if I buy this one I've got the extra current carrying capacity um, 
uh, this is what's called one millimeter square cross-sectional area and this is 2.5 millimeter cross-sectional area um, so uh, uh, this one is going to have two and a half times the resistance of this one and so of course the volts drop subject to the current uh, but at least with this cable if I uh, want to change the motor at all this, this will take um, uh, well it's rated at 240 volts uh, AC that's the UK standard mains voltage not that I want that in the garden at all um, but at least having the um, uh, thicker uh, cross-sectional area or greater cross-sectional area um, it, it should be okay one of the uh, potential issues is um, because this little inverter actually puts out a mixture of uh, AC and DC uh, a long length of cable like this um, uh, 25 meters um, uh, that, that's over 25 yards I can't do the sum in my head um, uh, but um, the um, put in a, a high uh, frequency signal higher than uh, 50 or 60 uh, Hertz through there it could have quite um, uh, a significant impedance uh, issue so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to uh, jury rig this and, and just check and make sure that uh, the inverter is quite happy to work uh, 25 meters away from the drill motor okay I've got the uh, inverter jury rigged onto the drill I don't think I can get both into the shot with this uh, limited uh, range lens. But, uh you can hear the torque limiter cutting in. So uh, yeah, that's that's no problem. I uh, didn't really anticipate any. Uh, it, it can't, uh, I didn't really anticipate any problems um, but as I say it's, it's not just a straight DC signal coming out of there okay that's as far as I'm going to go on this video guys uh, the last video I uploaded um, it took an hour to upload it and I had to do it three times it just kept on going wrong it says oh everything's going fine and then right at the end it says sorry mate you're uh, uh, you'll have to do it again um, so hopefully this one's not too long um, thanks for uh, the interest in the project um, appreciate that and uh, thanks for watching guys bye bye